Welcome back. Now, before we get started, I wanted to take a minute and say that I know some of you have an extremely supportive staff, but others of you may be doing this all by yourself and might feel completely unseen. So I wanted to let you know that I see you and we are grateful for your commitment to helping your church connect with people. We believe that good communication and connection leads to life change through Jesus. So thank you for being here and taking the time to invest in your church. If you have any technical support questions, email our team support at textandchurch.com. You can follow along with us in the workbook, and we have a link to it in the chat in case you missed it. These last two sessions go hand in hand. We will be implementing our proven guest follow-up system to connect with guests and keep them coming back. One of the components of that is the connection card, which we'll discuss in the final session. In this session, you'll use an easy button to set up six weeks worth of follow-up. And that follow-up plan includes emails, text, and reminders to staff using our automated workflows. The follow-up plan is simple. It consists of the right kind of messaging delivered in the right frequency over the right amount of time. Not only are these messages extremely effective, but they will save you and your staff time and make sure that no one falls through the cracks. As one of our members, Marshall Clack says, as the pastor of a church between 70 and 80 people, I've tried various ideas for following up with our guests. Unfortunately, when your main driving force is made up of volunteers, more than you want to admit, guests can fall through the cracks. Thankfully, I came across Text and Church and have been blown away at the success of our follow-up system. If I were to name one thing that I really like about Text and Church, it would be the reality that once the guest information is entered in, Text and Church begins to work for you. Text and Church will follow up with your guests while you're able to focus on other areas. We are pumped to get your workflow set up, but before we get started, I wanted to let you in on a surprise we have for you. Throughout the day, we've been sharing the link to our secrets page that gives you top resources from Text and Church, easy buttons from today's sessions, in addition to bonus easy buttons, as well as our welcome training talk, which helps you form effective language around inviting people to fill out your connect card so you can actually follow up with them. Well, we intentionally didn't talk about one of the biggest bonuses you get on that secrets page. It's our masterclass called the three-step follow-up formula. It's focused on how to systematically transition first-time guests into active members. I highly recommend you take the time to check out this masterclass to get even more insight on creating an effective guest follow-up system. But let's get this follow-up workflow set up. You ready? Before we actually show you how to implement our proven follow-up plan, I want to explain a few things you might notice once we jump in. The first thing you'll notice is that this series of messages for your guests is six weeks long. That's not a typo you're looking at. That is intentional. That's because most people are not in the habit of going to church and it's time for a new guest to stay consistent and keep your church front of mind. The first time someone attends church, there's more than an 80% likelihood that they will never come back. We've heard from countless churches how grateful their guests are that they never gave up on them. You'll also notice we are not messaging them every day for those six weeks, just one or two touches a week, with the exception of a first week since there are a few more action items. Consistent communication is the key to showing a guest that they are important. The third thing you'll notice is that it's not all text messages and emails. We believe in the communication golden rule, which is if the message matters, then use all means to communicate it. We think it is important to recognize that different people respond and connect to messages coming from different places. So we use email, text, phone, handwritten letters, gifts, and Facebook. This may sound like a lot, but remember the system will send messages for you. That's right. Our automated workflow will send the messages for you. And if that term automated workflow feels foreign, it is essentially what it sounds like. It is a workflow of emails and text messages that automatically go out to your people in this situation to your guest after they get added to the group. They can be added to the group by filling out a digital connection card, which we will talk about in session four, or when you add them to the group manually, or even if they text a keyword to your number. I love how engaged speaker, Pastor Devin Galloway puts it. 
When keywords and Smart Connect cards are designed with automated workflows, there is an instantaneous communication taking place. Now, let me share my screen so that we can dive on in. First, let's create our guest follow-up group using our easy button provided to you on our secrets page and in our workbook. Now, before I click the button, let me tell you what's gonna happen. When we click the easy button, it is going to create a group inside of your Text in Church account for our guests. You'll notice when I start walking through that, it will ask a few questions. Try to answer them the best way you can now to save you time, but know that you can go back and change them individually later. I'm going to go ahead and answer them while creating this group so that it uses the information to customize my workflow messages. All right, so we are gonna start out on our secrets page and you see all of the easy buttons here. We're gonna click this middle button for our guest follow-up. So once we do that, it's going to open up a new page with your text and church account. And you see, these are those questions that I asked about. Now, because I use this account all the time, um, this these are already pre-filled for me. So answer them to the best of your ability, but I'll show you how you can change all of these in just a moment. So I'm gonna hit import group. And then here it has my group created. And so now it already has my keyword in here for me, my 16 steps. Um, and we are, um, this is just kind of your group overview screen uh, where you can see your connect cards. We'll go over that more in session four. Um, but all of your group details can be seen from this page. And so what we're going to do um, what we're gonna do first here is we're going to go to the automated workflows tab. Now in using the secrets page and the easy button, you can see that all of these automated workflows are automatically added for you. And anything that you filled out in that little form whenever you imported your group will automatically be in these messages. But if you change something or you needed to add something later, I can easily show you how to do that. So first, what we're going to do is um, kind of just give you an overview of these workflows. So here is each workflow step name. Here's the type of message that it is. You can see that there's different icons here. These envelopes here are email messages. These bells here are reminder messages. They're internal messages that go to somebody on your staff or volunteers. We'll go over that here more in just a second. And then we um, have text messages as well. So the type, the name, this is the schedule. And then this is whether or not that message is active. And then you have some options here for each one of your steps. You can either pause it, copy it or delete the step. So if you're like, ah, I don't really need that, we don't have um, a, a gift that we give them, then you could delete this altogether. Or maybe it might be something where you have uh, ran out of stock for your gifts. And so you might need to pause this message so it doesn't go out. So you can hit the pause button. This button turns red here, this indicator. And that message means that, uh, that means that this message is inactive and not sending. Um, so you can edit any one of your workflows. We'll jump right in here. If you just click on the name, you're, you're taken into that automated workflow message. And here you can kind of see, it looks very similar to your message builder, but just with a couple added steps. So first you can see who this message is sending from. Who does this email message show that this, um, is it show that it's coming from. And so here you can see that right now I have my name in there and it's, uh, you can see here, it says who should receive, um, the recipient replies of this email. And then I have my email address here. And so for me, that works fine. It may be that you have a secretary or an admin that you want the replies to this email to go to. So you can designate whoever you need to be um, receiving the replies in this field. And if you, um, and remember all of this was auto-populated from that menu that I, that I filled out whenever I first imported the group, but you can change it right here, right now, really easily. If that all looks good, I can hit save changes and I'm automatically taken down. This is the email subject line. And so it says, thanks for joining us at Test Church because this is just a little test account that I'm doing, a uh, little test for you to kind of demo what this looks like. Um, so if that all looks good, I can, you can hit save changes. If you wanna change that, you could just click right in the field and type whatever you're wanting um, this subject line of this email to be. 
then you can just hit save changes and then you're taken down and you can see the actual body of this message. And so here it kind of shows you a little preview. You can see what this email looks like. You know, thanks so much for joining us at Test Church. Um, you know, as our welcome team, it tries to improve our guest experience. We'd love your feedback, you know, share your experience with us and a couple more details. But if there's anything in here that I need to change, for instance, whenever that menu um, had my Facebook link, I put that I needed to add it because I needed to go and find it. I didn't have it quickly. And so you can see that here. I'm going to go and scroll back up and hit the edit page. And now this is uh, this changes to a clickable field where I can edit this. I can make any changes. I can delete this out of here. Um, any changes that I want to make to this automated workflow message, I can right here from this page. Um, so once I, you know, if I decide to take this out and type in the actual Facebook link, whatever I need to do, I can make those changes from this page. I can also add um, an, uh, maybe a a picture or um, maybe a, a file, a document file that they need, that somebody might need to get in their hands um, as well. Once that all looks good, if everything on this automated workflow looks good, once I edit it, I can just hit save changes and I'm taken down to a couple more options. And for all of our automated workflows, you do have the option to repeat any step. Um, but since this is a first time guest workflow, that's not really applicable here. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of skip over that. Um, and then you're taken down to scheduling your message. And remember, your automated workflows are all centered around your group join date. So the date that people join this group, oh, sorry about that, the date that people join this group, um, or in other words, um, the, uh, the, the date of their first Sunday, the, their first visit. And so this sends on um, to wait to send on any day. It sends and um, it's waiting zero days sitting any day at 1 p.m. And so maybe, okay, sitting any day kind of works, but maybe I want this to send specifically on a Sunday. Then I can change this rather than any day. I can do Sunday, because that's the only day that we have first time guests in the building, um, that we acknowledge them like this with this workflow. And so Sunday and, you know, our services are a little bit later in the morning. And so maybe I'll push this back so that it goes out at about two, roughly at 2.30. Um, so it's that way they're already home. I know that they're probably home or maybe they're out at a, a restaurant for lunch um, or something like that. And I can, I know that they're getting it after service. Um, once that all looks good, I can hit done here. And then I just have to save my changes if that all looks good. Um, but you also have another, uh, a few additional options on this page as well. If you want to test this message and just kind of see what it will look like for your first time guests, you can send yourself a test message here. So all you have to do is select a contact in your account and then you can have their, um, you can choose to send a test message. Once you do that, this button will become illuminated and you can send a test message to anybody in your account. Um, here you can also activate and deactivate a step from this page. Page, or you can also change the title of this automated workflow message. So if you want to do, um, you know, just intro email um, rather than same day introduction email, if you wanted to say something different, um, you can do that just really easily by clicking on this uh, pencil icon and then just um, typing exactly what you want here in this field. Um, so you have those options there. And so I am going to um, click on saving, uh, click on save to save all the changes that I made. And just like in your messages tab of your account, it gives you a little synopsis of what you've done. So this message, this automated workflow message is going to anyone in your first time follow up guest in person group. Um, it's an email message. And then this is the scheduling changes may take up to 15 minutes to take effect. So you don't want to edit your workflow too close around the sending time. And then once that all looks good, you just hit save and then you're taken back to your automated workflows tab here. Um, something that I, we always recommend that people do um, whenever they're uh, kind of editing their workflow and making changes here, we definitely recommend that you add yourself to this group um, so that you can see the entire workflow and how it works in its entirety. Um, we 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 know that uh, you know as you kind of go through it and edit, it's it's you know you want to be curious about how your guest experience is. So definitely add yourself to this group, go through the workflow yourself, so you can see how this will look for your first time guests and visitors. We've heard countless stories of how this system has not only helped keep guests coming back, but how much the guests have grown in their faith and connections they've made in the church because of it. Marty Swinehart shared in our Facebook group, something exciting happened last weekend and I want to share it. 
Someone texted us wanting salvation. We were able to lead them in prayer and follow up with them, all using text in church. Thank you for all your work designing tools that equip our churches and teaching us how to use them. I also love this story from Holly Howard. She said, One sweet lady told me I have never had a pastor and his wife reach out to me personally, so I thought I have to go back to that church. She has been coming ever since. Without text in church, I doubt we would have seen Belinda come back again. Now she's going to small groups and attending faithfully. Text in church gave us a chance to disciple her and get her connected. In this session, you got access to a quick win using our easy button and automated workflows to connect with your guests to keep them coming back. You are now prepared to create your group, access the guest follow-up automated workflow, customize your messages, and how to pause and set messages to active. If the automated workflows feel a little too automated or not personal enough, I want to share with you what my friend, Pastor Carly, shared with me just a few weeks ago. He is a pastor of a small rural church, and before using Text in Church and our automated workflows, he said, I was missing people, prayer requests, opportunities to follow up, everything. When he started utilizing our system, especially the automated workflows, he now says he never worries about missing someone and having the messages set up in the workflows is like having a virtual assistant. <laughs> Wouldn't it feel amazing to feel like you have an extra employee that works for you 24 seven and make sure that the right message goes to the right person at the right time? Now let's have you take some time to go through each message. Make sure everything is correct, but also that it's customized and personalized for your church. 